So I finally made it to Waterton. The weather network said that it was gonna be sunny. As soon as I come here, it is now piss pouring rain. In this episode, I get rained on, ventured into the Prince of Wales Hotel. It looks cracked out of its mind. Faced off against a demonic deer. You're blocking my path. Uh oh. Encountered a scam. Ten dollars for a f***ing patch. Welcome to the Wandering Series. Hello everyone, welcome to the Wandering Series, a series where we try to visit every place on Roadside America and Atlas Obscura. Today, our venture takes us to Waterton Lake National Park, nestled in the picturesque southwest corner of Alberta, Canada. This breathtaking national park shares its border with Glacier National Park in Montana, USA. Our spotlight destination and only destination that we have listed is on the Atlas Obscura website, that being the Prince of Wales. I did have a better introduction, but my files from the beginning of this trip got corrupted. So with that, I timed my visit less than ideally as the prior week brought heavy rainfall. Over a two hour period, upwards of 50 millimeters of rain poured over the Waterton town site in Crandall Mountain Sunday evening, causing considerable damage and leading to the closure of numerous Waterton attractions, shutting everything down besides from the town itself. Flooding had obstructed roads and trails while the risk of of rock slides added to the challenge. This meant that access to sites like Cameron Lake and Red Rock Canyon was off the table. Despite this setback, if you're craving some Red Rock vistas, you should check out my other video where I explore Red Rock Coulee. And to top off my visit to Waterton, the weather took a turn for the worse and started raining. So I finally made it to Waterton and the weather network said that it was gonna be sunny, might be a bit cloudy, and it's gonna be warm out. And as soon as I I come here, it is now piss pouring rain. So the first thing I have to do before I do anything else is I gotta find a jacket that I can buy because I didn't bring one, because I'm a dick. We might be in luck because there's a general store right, right over there. So I think that's where we're gonna go first. I have got to get out of this rain, so hopefully, hopefully they have something for me. They got a hoodie. They have mints. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys sell jackets here? We have sweatshirts. Sweatshirts? Like yeah. rain jackets? Nope. After my unsuccessful search for a jacket at the store, the lady at the counter advised me to wait a bit due to the unpredictable weather changes in the area. Taking her suggestion, I proceeded to our next destination, the Prince of Wales Hotel. So I just got here to the Prince of Wales and it cost $10 just to park. Some guy in a kilt told me about it. He was just standing outside in the rain and I'm like, well, okay. So I guess we're gonna take a look around. We're, we're committed now. $10 for parking, it's absurd. But the nice thing is it did stop raining. So, so it's not too bad. See, there he is, there he is. Over there charging people for money, $10. The Prince of Wales Hotel is a National Historic Site of Canada and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The hotel was constructed as part of a visionary effort by the Great Northern Railway Company or GNR by Lewis Hill, the president of GNR at the time. Their aim was to attract tourists to the scenic landscapes of Waterton Lakes. In 1913, they found the iconic spot to place the hotel, but it took another 14 years to see their vision happen. One being that World War I was in full force, and two, there was a chance that Upper Waterton Lake would be dammed. But luckily, the war ended and the dam was cancelled and the hotel was finally built. Despite facing challenges during the construction, including delays and setbacks, the Prince of Wales Hotel officially opens its doors to the public on July 25th, 1927. The hotel's design and architecture are noteworthy as well. The Prince of Wales Hotel features a Swiss chalet style characterized by red cider shingles and white painting woodwork, which helps it blend in with the natural surroundings. The building stands 121 feet tall with seven floors, offering picturesque views of Upper Waterton Lake and the surrounding area. The hotel was named 
named after King Edward VIII, or his actual name, Edward Albert Christian George Andrew Patrick David. How many first names do you need? Edward was the eldest child of the Duke and Duchess of York, later known as King George V and Queen Mary. They named it after him because it just so happened he was on his Canadian tour at the time, so they thought if they named it after him that he would stay there. <laughs> and well, he didn't, rather choosing to stay at his ranch. Imagine naming a building after someone and they don't even stay there. <laughs> I, just, I just find it funny. The hotel's location is actually breathtaking, with you getting one of the most iconic views in Canada, where you can see all of Upper Waterton Lake and the town itself. So windy out, yeah, but it is one of the prettiest views you'll ever see, that's for sure. But there was a forest fire oh, a few years back, and all the trees haven't really grown back yet. It stopped raining, and it's sunny out, so not too bad. Hopefully, oh, not probably too close. I don't know how to, close to get to the mic without it sounding mad, but I think we're gonna go inside. We're gonna have some tea, tea, tea party, tea time. I think it is, or whatever. So I think we can go. Upon entering the Prince of Wales, you'll find yourself in the grand lobby with a vintage rustic ambiance. The hotel's interior architecture echoes the Swiss chalet style seen on the exterior. This includes exposed wood beams and intricate woodwork. Combining these details contributes to the hotel's cozy and rustic charm. Another interesting thing to note about the Prince of Wales is that the hotel is supposedly haunted. After walking around for a bit, I wanted to eat at the Royal Stewart Dining Room, where they do a special known as afternoon tea. That is what we're after. I thought you would just be able to walk in, but no, you need a reservation, and one pretty far in advance, I guess. I tried to explain to him that I'm a big YouTuber and TikTok star with 40 followers now, but they wouldn't allow it, and it's like they didn't even know who I was. We don't take any more reservation right now and walk in. Uh, no walk-in? Yeah, no walk-in, no, walk sadly. But I'll have to return to the Prince of Wales sometime in the future and do the hotel properly. I do want to spend the night in one of the haunted rooms and do a bit of a ghost adventure episode. I also want to have my afternoon tea, damn it. So one day I'll have to come back, but let me know if you would want to see an episode like that. That kind of fucking sucks. I wanted my tea. I want my fancy tea, but I guess it's a fancy place. You gotta make a reservation. Even though there's like three people in there, I'm sure they could do it, but oh well. After being denied service, at the restaurant, it was time to leave to find the red chairs. In 2011, members at Gross Moor National Park came up with an idea to place red chairs around their park, inviting visitors to try and find all 18 chairs and to post them on social media. It was a giant success, and now over 400 red chairs are scattered across Canada for you to find. And I kind of want to find them all. With Waterton, there are four red chairs to visit. Thinking it would be on this trail, I set off to find this. Oh my god, dude, a fucking squirrel just jumped out. Scared the absolute shit. Oh, there he is. Oh. Along the way, I stumbled upon a deer eating some berries, but he was blocking my way. See, I'm just not sure what I can do here, walking my path. The deer in this video looks pretty normal, right? Some would even say majestic. But I also took some pictures which is when I got this picture of this deer. What type of demonic deer is this? It looks like it's staring into my soul, planning on how to steal it. So he's moving away. I just follow the deer. Maybe he knows where the red chair is. Yeah, yeah, come on, keep going. I gotta pass you. If you let me pass, we could, we can mark things out. You're blocking my path. Uh oh, he's turning around. <laughs> Coming back this way, stop it. I couldn't pass the deer. I didn't want to bother him either, so I just turned around and started walking back. The trail is a loop, so I thought I would just go around. So I think we 
try the other way. He's actually, as cute as he is, really put a damper on my plans to find this chair. But along the way, I found a couple walking my way. I decided to join them thinking that in a group, we might move the immovable deer. Well, I, I brought backup. And this guy just didn't care at all. He even tried to pet it, which you don't do that. Don't touch the wildlife. I can probably take a deer, but do I want to take a deer? It's the only thing. There's another one oh, up there. Oh, he's right there. Yeah, no, there is another one. What do you what, what do you call those? Tulips? After finishing the trail, there was no red chair. Turns out I didn't even need to do the trail. The chair is right there in the parking lot. I just completely missed it. Oh no, there it is. I see it. I see it. It's right there. So this is the red chairs. After finding our first red chair, I ventured into town and went to the visitor center. Is that another deer? Another deer over there. No, oh, that's a that's a statue. I don't know. Let's we'll see what this is. I think this is like a interactive center. Wait, what the hell is that? Mo Moflon? Moflon? Big horn sheep. We saw one of those guys at the windmill museum. Oh wait, there's a cougar up there. Cougar? Not the fun ones though. Here, we got a little beaver. Oh, dude, it looks cracked out of its mind. Pick the animal. What one do I pick? The swan. Oh, heron. What is that? Common, common rags in there. Oh, look. <laughs> what is this? A bunch of... Oh, I can like flip this over? What is it? I, what, this is like tracking. Ooh, that's a coyote. That's the big one. That's a black bear. You just put a little note. Shameless self-promotion. <laughs> I need to entice people. Put a little smiley face. I kind of dig that. I think I'm going to get it. $10 for a patch? Really? See, I get it. Waterton is a tourist place, so you're going to pay tourist prices. I get that. But for $10 for a patch, no wonder why they didn't put the price up since no one would buy it if they saw it. $10 for a patch? Are you... <laughs> this is the biggest scam I think I've ever got. 10 bucks. 10 buckaroos for this guy, holy After being robbed, I got myself a horchata, a drink originating from North Africa, for only $7. $10. Seven bucks. What the f I then went to find the second red chair. That is chair number two. I think we just walked the little shoreline and make our way back. International boundary. Yeah, so with Waterton, it's actually split between the United States and Canada. So Canada has like half or something like that, and the United States has the other, and that leads back into Montana, which is kind of neat. You know what? Let's go to that gift shop first. Oh. Oh. That was actually. That's kind of even more dope. Yeah, I'm gonna get this one. Alright, 1575. Oh, we don't take cash. So no cash? That's that, No, that's alright. I got debit. Don't take cash. Is that not weird? Like, this is a very touristy place. You would think that they would take cash. Oh, there's a squirrel. I found you. Oh, I, no, actually, that is not a squirrel. I went underground. <laughs> Wait, that was just a goal? Or do squirrels don't have a den underground, do they? I've never heard of that. I don't think so. I think that was a gopher. But it looked very much like a squirrel. So, what is it? That little knickknack is worth $6 more than a patch. I should have never got that patch. That was stupid of me. This is very, very dumb. I wasn't thinking. I was thinking like, okay, I just get my little gift out of the way and then that's kind of it. I should have just waited. I should have been smart. I think we're getting pretty close to the other red chair. After finding chair number two, I walked the shoreline to find the third red chair, but there was a slight problem. So it says the red chair is here, but this time there is no red chair, like at all. So I'm wondering if they like moved it or 
whatnot. It wasn't there. I looked it up online and it said I was in the right spot, but there was no red chair in sight. Confused and a bit annoyed, I decided to head to the last chair, which was also on the shoreline. After sitting in the last chair, I had some time to reflect on the red chairs and I just thought it was weird that one chair wasn't there, but all the other chairs were. So why wasn't that one? Well, it turns out a family just set up camp on that chair. So I found the other red chair. It's just that family has snagged it. I thought they were normal. I thought it was the normal chairs that they brought. No, those are the special chairs and they're just camping out right next to it. So I was right. So I was in the right area. So it's close enough which I guess you can do, sure, but I wanted a picture of the chair. I was close enough to get like the picture of the scenery of what the chair was facing, but it was just a bit annoying that they just decided to have a picnic right on top. So we did find all the red chairs. We actually did it. I then passed a small little restaurant called Beaver Tails. Beaver Tails, also known as, oh God, Kunis de Castor, I think maybe. Coup de Castor. But it was created by Grant and Pam Hooker, which, great last name, in 1978. <laughs> the, the, the Hookers were inspired by the idea of serving a sweet deep fried pastry that resembled a beaver's tail after being charmed by the shape of the beaver tails during a visit to Ottawa, Canada's capital. Beaver tails are a simple deep fried pastry sprinkled with cinnamon and sugar. The beaver tail dessert quickly gained popularity due to its distinctive shape, delicious taste, and association with Canadian culture. The dessert's name and shape pay homage to the beaver, a national symbol of Canada known for its significance in the country's history and the fur trade. That looks solid. Get back to the car and try it out. First bite, first bite. That's pretty good. That's actually solid. It kind of reminds me of banana ears, if I have shit over on my face. Nutella and bananas is the way to go. But yeah, this is great. This is delicious. Beaver Tales offer a cultural experience that resonates with Canadian and visitors seeking the taste of Canadian cuisine and heritage. And if you ever visit Canada, you have to try one. And that's the end of the episode. We did basically everything we came here to do today, which was really nice. The only exception is dining at the Prince of Wales, but I wouldn't mind coming back here because I would love to spend the night in a haunted hotel and I would actually book a reservation to have my tea party or whatever it was called. I forget what it is. I want my tea. Hopefully you guys learned something from this episode. And if you like the video, you know, like, comment, subscribe, stuff like that. And I'll see you guys in the next one.